In this video, I want to show you a book that is free. So this book is 100% free. You can download it from the internet, and it's called The Book of Proof. It was written by Richard Hammack, and I will leave a link in the description to the book. You can click that link. It'll take you to um, the website where he has the book that you can download. Um, I'll also leave a link to Amazon in case you want to buy the book. He does sell a paperback, and, and there's a hardcover available. Uh, which is pretty exciting. Personally, I am not a fan of um, PDF books, but it's free, right? So that makes it so much better uh, and is a great book. Uh, now, having said that, a lot of people, including myself, are, are guilty of thinking, you know, sometimes when things are free, they're not as good as things you pay for. Sometimes I have that thinking, which is sometimes true, but not always. It's sometimes very faulty thinking. And it's certainly faulty thinking in this case here. This is a great book. I have read maybe four or five sections and I've maybe done 10 to 15, maybe 20 exercises from this book uh, over the years. I've known about this book for a long time and this review is just super long overdone. It's a great book. Uh, I should thank my uh, subscribers. Several people have mentioned this book to me and I have not uh, done the review until now. Um, and I have read the book. I just forgot to go over it. So let's just jump into it right now. So if you Google it or if you click my link, it will take you to this website. And this is the book. Hopefully you can see it okay. And the way it's laid out is really nice. Uh, you can click on any of these links and it will take you to a particular section in the book. And nothing says you have to read this in a linear fashion, right? You can just jump into it. In fact, uh, let's just jump into the solutions first because that's one of the things that this book has that a lot of books don't other have. So I'm going to left click on solutions and that should open it up so you should be able to see uh, the solutions now on your screen. And Richard provides um, solutions to all of the odd numbered problems, including the proofs. And his proofs are very well written. Um, let me just say his proofs are very well written, but, but, you know, when it comes to proof writing, the best proofs are the ones you write. So I always think it's better to try to write your own proof first and then check the solutions. Um, for example, there was a proof here somewhere I was looking at earlier. Uh, it was a set theory proof, and I probably would have written it a little bit differently, but that's not to say that his proof is bad or wrong. It's just when you write your own proofs, it always, it always feels better. So great book, great solutions. Here's an example of some proofs he's written. Let's see here. Suppose A and B, let me just make it a little bit bigger so you can see. And we'll take a look at this one, number seven here. Suppose A and B are integers. If A divides B, then A squared divides B squared. So I haven't proved this, but to prove this, what would you do? You would assume that A divides B. That means that B is a multiple of A, and then you would maybe square both sides. So let's see. By definition of divisibility, this means that B is equal to A times C for some integer C. That's what it means for B to be a multiple of A, okay? Squaring both sides of this equation produces b squared equals a squared equals c squared. Right, so b squared equals a squared times d, where he has set d equal to c squared. So d is an integer. In other words, b squared is a multiple of a squared. That means that a squared divides b squared. I said that really, really quickly, but again, I've done this before a bunch, right? So if you don't understand, that's okay. This is number seven in chapter four. So you, you have to work your way here. And the solutions, you know, give you that hope. These are really well-written proofs. Um, and again, if you're one of those people uh, like me who sometimes thinks, oh, if it's free, it's probably not that good. Um, not the case. This book is fabulous. This book is fabulous. So I'm going to jump to um, this section here, direct proof theorems. This is really cool. This is a good, this is a good section. It says, it's time to prove some theorems. There are various strategies for doing this. We now examine the most straightforward approach a technique called direct proof. That's right. Direct proof is like the most important proof, in my opinion, that you should learn. It's, you know, how to prove like an if then statement. Uh, you, you assume everything after the if and you prove everything after the then. And he just goes through the structure really nicely. And here he talks about uh, the meanings of three terms, theorem, proof and definition. So a theorem is a mathematical statement that is true and can be and has been verified as true, right? So theorem is reserved for big things like the fundamental theorem of algebra, the fundamental theorem of calculus, you know, the CELO theorems, um, you know, big, big things. Taylor's theorem. A proof of a theorem is a written 
verification that shows that the theorem is definitely and unequivocally true. I hope I said that correctly. And here he talks about definition. I'm skipping to the bold here because I spent hours reading this. Yeah, definition is an exact, unambiguous explanation of the meaning of a mathematical word or phrase. Yeah, very nice. And here he gives some examples. There was something else interesting. I've, I've, I read this a long time ago. Here he talks about propositions. A statement that is true but not as significant is sometimes called a proposition. So um, a lot of books tend to overuse the word theorem, in, in my opinion. I think theorem should be reserved for big things. Um, proposition is something smaller. A lemma, okay, is something you use to prove uh, a theorem or a proposition. It says here, a lemma is a theorem whose main purpose is to help to prove another theorem. Yes. And a corollary is, is a result, right? There's really some, some big corollaries in mathematics. And it tells you here it's not important that you remember these, but you probably will. The first time I learned this wasn't from this book. Um, it was it was in an abstract algebra class, and I thought, oh, oh, that's what proposition means. And I, I'm getting goosebumps. Just <laughs> just really great stuff. Great book. Not you know, it's just written very well. The fact it's telling you this already, I think, is a great sign. Here he talks about definitions, and he goes on to mention that every definition is really an if and only if statement, which is so key in my opinion, and I think he does it here. Technically, the definition should read, an integer n is even if and only if n equals 2a for some integer a and z. So there should be an if and only if in every definition. If you look at the definition, though, um, it's up here. It just says if. It doesn't say if and only if. But whenever it's a definition, you have to assume it goes both ways. So what I mean by that in this case is if the integer is even, then it's a multiple of 2a, n equals 2a for some a. If it's a multiple of 2, then it's even. I think I misspoke. If it's even, it's a multiple of 2. If it's a multiple of 2, it's even. So this here means multiple of 2. It's, it's easier to say that than to say n equals 2a for some integer a and z. Obviously, you have to know multiple of 2 means that, but it's just... It's a way to think about things, and the more uh, math you study, the more you start to develop these these different ways about thinking about concepts and definitions. But this book, this book is great because it's written in a very very good way. Um, let's jump to another uh, chapter. I haven't looked at all of the uh, sections. Let's jump to, um, let's go to actually let's go back to direct proof, and let's see if we can find some exercises here. So this is direct proof. I'm going to make it big again. I'm going to see if he has uh, some exercises here. He should have some exercises at the end of the chapter. So here's some more examples. So many examples and so many proofs uh, in this wonderful little book. Um, just, just awesome. So case, 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 proposition. Go on. Here we go. Exercises for chapter four. Hurrah. So use the method of direct proof. Make it bigger here so you can see it. Let me make sure you can see that. Yep. To prove the following statements. If x is an even integer, then x squared is even. So what you do is, you know, you take your you take your paper or pencil or pen or whatever, notebook, whatever you want to write with, and you try to write it out. So in this case, you would assume that x is even, and then you would show that x squared is even. So, you know, you assume x is even. What does that mean? You go through the process, and then you can check your answers. And again, his proofs are very well written, right? It's it's solid. A lot of times you'll see solutions in, in math books and you look in the back of the book and they'll have like a proof sketch but it's written in a very like i don't know it's almost like this is how you do it you should be able to fill in the details yourself which is fine um but this book does does a better job it's just, just a little more detailed and i think it's what people need uh when they're learning to write proofs yeah really nice really nice book a long time ago i was having this thought about writing a math book and um and then i found this book and i thought <sighs> <laughs> there's this although i'd probably include other things uh besides this stuff but yeah really really look at all these exercises and you get answers to all of the odd ones which is fantastic just fantastic so this is chapter four yeah we saw this earlier some of the uh solutions for chapter four i think we were looking at maybe number seven earlier um let's jump to a different a different a different uh section so here he does contrapositive proof proof by contradiction uh, disproof, proofs involving sets, mathematical induction. Ooh, proofs in calculus. Let's go to that. I've, this is something I've looked at because I'm pretty sure I've done some calculus proofs from this book. Yeah, it says here, the proofs we have dealt with so far in this text have been largely proofs about integers 
or about structures related to integers, so divisibility, uh, congruence module n, sets of integers, relations among integers, functions of integers, etc. Of course, mathematics is not restricted to just integers. Calculus right, is built on the system of real numbers, and calculus proofs are different. Um, you, know, you spend a lot of time doing proofs in all of these things he's talking about, and then when you jump to like the calculus proofs with the deltas and the epsilons and the inequalities, it's a whole other proof style. Just like when you jump to counting proofs, it's a whole other way of writing proofs. Um, so it just takes a whole different type of thinking, a whole different um, skill set for the most part. You're, you're still using a lot of the same skills. That structure is still there, but the proofs have a different flavor to them. So here he talks about single variable calculus. Let's, let's see if we can find a proof here. He talks about the triangle inequality, which is super useful. Uh, in all of calculus and calculus proofs and mathematics, it's fundamental. Talks about the definition of a limit. That's a familiar picture. If you've ever taken calculus one, you've probably seen this picture. Here's the informal one. Let's see if we can find a proof. Let's just keep looking here. This is cool. This is really this is a really cool book. And again, I'll leave a link in the description um, in case you uh, want to look at it. You can look at it for free on his website. You can download it. And I'll also leave a link in case you want to to buy uh, either paperback or apparently it's apparently it's available in, in hardcover. So here's a limit proof. Prove that, uh, let me see if I can make it bigger. I think it's a good size. Well, let me just try one size bigger. Let me just see if you can see it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, we're good. So prove that uh, the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x plus 4 equals 10. So let's see, let me read his proof and see what, what I think. Suppose epsilon is greater than 0. Note that, yes, so so uh, interesting. So interesting, he's, he's noting that this would be the scratch work. This is how you figure it out, right? You basically take your f of x minus your l, and you want that to be less than epsilon. So he, he writes this, which is f of x minus l, which is 10. He simplifies it and gets here. And then so if delta equals this, yeah, so it's a good proof. It's a, it's a good proof. Um, he could have written more to make it more uh, explanatory. For example, I've made videos on this, and I explain it um, more than this. I explain how he arrived. Like, I explained this part a little bit more, I think. But this is really solid. I mean, this is better than um, most books I've seen out there. Here's one where he does a quadratic. That's always really tough for people. Um, and I think he does a good job here. Yeah, really nice. So this is a harder one. This is one of the ones that always trips people up, you know, proving uh, delta epsilon for a quadratic. So let's keep going, see what else we got. Limits that do not exist. So proving a limit does not exist. He goes through that process. So this will help you if you're taking advanced calculus. You know, if you ever have to take um, like an advanced calculus class, you will you will do stuff like this, right? These are the kind of kinds of things you will do. So it's not just like, hey, let's learn about some sets and some division problems. No, no, you do you do a little bit of uh, you know advanced calculus. So if you're an undergrad, uh, at least in the U.S., um, they have a class. It's typically called Advanced Calculus One or you know Real Analysis, and at the undergraduate level. And you do stuff like this, you you prove stuff like this. So um, it's kind of cool that you can go online and you can look at this book for free and, and you can learn this stuff. And there's cardinality of sets, functions. Let's look at functions. Let's go to, notice when I highlight something, let me make it bigger, so make sure you can see, well, it's too big maybe. When I highlight something, you can see um, the blue and you can pick the different like subsections. So let's go to, um, let's see, functions and injective and surjective functions let's look at that here you can see it here very good yeah cool so let's see if he has some examples here he defines a function from a to b as a relation okay from a to b satisfying the property that for each a and a the relation f contains exactly one ordered pair of the form yeah so here he defines a function and he does it in a good way he defines uh, a function as a relation with a special property, right? And he just, he, destroy, he describes that special property here. So that's good. It's a good way to do it, I think. A lot of times, uh, books will define a function as a rule, which is fine. Uh, this is a little bit more formal, and it's a good way to think about it, uh, or at least a good way to realize that you can think about it that way when you are doing the proofs. Talks about domain, codomain. This is that arrow notation. A lot of people, um, you know, if you're taking calculus, make sure you can see, if you're taking calculus in college or in high school, you might not be familiar with this with this arrow notation, right? So here he defines it for a function f from a to b 
the set A is called the domain. Think of the domain as the set of input values. And B is called the codomain. The range of F, that's the word you often use uh, in you know, uh, calculus classes and algebra classes, uh, is this set here. And think of the range as the set of all possible output values for F. Think of the codomain as sort of the target for the outputs. Okay, okay, that's that that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a target. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and here he gives some examples um, of functions. See if we can find a proof. I love these diagrams. <laughs> Such a great book, and it's free. It's free. Again, you can buy it if you want to. Um, I, my biggest con with this book is that it's a PDF. But I, why, why you can't really complain about that because you do have the option to buy it. So here he has a function, I believe that's phi or phi, defined as phi of m comma n, 6m minus 9n. Interesting. And it wants the range there, so he goes through the process of finding the range. Cool. Yeah, so great book. Um, just awesome. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, there's exercises, there's solutions, it's free. You can buy it. Again, I will... I won't forget. I will try to remember to leave um, a link in the description for you so that you can download the book or you can go to this website, which is better because you can kind of just hop around on the sections. By the way, when you click a section, like if I click on contrapositive, it opens the entire book. I can go up to previous sections. Okay, so you can get the entire book if you want to. So I'll leave a link to this and I'll also leave a link uh, in case you want to buy a paperback or a hardcover, and I think they're fairly inexpensive. Um, you know, inexpensive is relative, but I, I think it's like I don't know. It's not. It's not like a hundred dollars or anything like that. It's it's pretty good. So good book. Uh, again, I've done maybe ten to twenty problems. I've read at least four or five sections. You know, maybe more. And yeah, Richard Hammock, awesome book. Uh, it's great. I hope this video has helped someone. Uh, now you have a free book. <laughs> you can learn a little bit of advanced math. And anything you learn, like all, all of the little stuff that you learn from this book, like if you learn even just a little stuff, like, you know, just, you know, how to prove if then statements, uh, function notation, that stuff is so important. Proof structure is so important. Once you have the structure down, you can read uh, more advanced math. And if you have the prereqs for it, you'll be able to, to understand it. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.